Welcome back. It is part four of my rebuilding the Oliver 310 1855 engine. Did I say part four? It's part four. Um, I had to, well, I remembered uh, my old uh, ring uh, compressor. Kind of used it last fall to rebuild a, the hydraulic cylinder in my uh, grain auger and needed something to compress that u-cup seal down it was not going in the best didn't want to tear it up this worked good but pushed it a little too far and broke the bands on it but for 11 bucks i got a new one off from amazon i imagine i could put that in my store we'll see how well it works but the biggest thing i can see is my old one has a lot finer teeth on the uh, ratchet than this one so we will, and that was probably the biggest complaint I saw about it. But I figure for 11 bucks, I'll give it a whirl. I also uh, got a question via email about what my light was here. Um, I actually got this for Christmas for my brother, so thank you. Um, so I don't know where he got it. I'll look online and see if I can find something. And But it's a soup dig, soup dig. Um, Probably Ross can pronounce that. Sounds German. Um, maybe uh, Norwegian. It has a GoPro mount. And then um, I use the adapt to a um, the uh, go or the tripod adapter. Just I bought just the magnet on Amazon. The base was from the one that uh, was on the plow that fell off when I was plowing. I got plowed under and was able to rescue it and the magnet was much weaker on that uh, so i was able to take the mount from that off and i found this really strong magnet on amazon and it is but that makes it really handy for working on this stuff because you know magnetic it's very bright um it's got a dimmer setting if you need it and then a flashing one if if you know maybe your sleeves aren't going in right and you need help you call for trouble you call for help So now all that's out of the way, let's get putting some pistons and, and rods in the engine. Um, let's work our way. Oh, let's start at the back. So four, five, that must be six right here. It's the only one that's not labeled. Two, no, this one's six. Well, it should say on a rod as well. Yes, six. I gotta take the cap off when I send them in. He actually had to size this end a little bit. He said it was off. He was wondering if there was any bearing damage. The bearings actually looked really good out of this engine. One of the few things that went right with it, I guess. But so, uh, but you need to, you know, clamp down and then he checks the size and hones it or does whatever he's gotta do to size it, check it for out around. And so he did have to do a little work on them. And so hopefully it's right. <laughs> I'll get these off. These are the old rod bolts. I haven't used the new ones yet. Although they are the new style, I went ahead and bought new bolts just to be safe. I'm gonna make sure the ring gaps aren't lined up since there's only two compression rings. I am going to uh, put them opposite of each other. Because you know, that's a lot of pressure in there. I'm sure you saw in the previous video, number two, it'll squeeze down to only like about 15 thousandths of inch gap. But that's still a little blast of hot air that can get through. And if they're lined up, it can shoot through that spot. So by putting them opposite each other, you don't have that problem. Let's see, and then I'll put the oil ring, I don't know. About 90 degrees from either of those. The biggest thing is if they're staggered. Got a snap ring on this side, snap ring on that side, it's in there. So it's a grease, my assembly lube grease, but yep, I can feel it. So it's front here, front that way. this baby on and see how well it works wait a minute I should lube it 
I almost sent you in dry, little feller. Nobody wants that. I just use regular motor oil for this. Um, I don't want anything thicker and heavy. It just needs to be lubricated. I don't want anything that's gonna hang up in the rings and get burnt and make for uh, soot and coke and stuff that's gonna gum things up. I'll also wipe down the inside of the sleeve with some motor oil too, just to give it a film. Work it around there. Let's see, I'm getting stuff lined up again. I was at service school one time for, um, oh, Massey Ferguson and stuff, actually. It was right after we'd taken on the Massey Ferguson co contract. One of the things we're going over was the Izeki built tractors for Massey Ferguson. And uh, they actually said, don't worry about the rings being lined up. If you come take one out and the gaps are lined up, that the rings follow the hone marks and can turn and move with each up and down cycle. Um, all of us uh, service guys were kind of um, doubting that one. But uh, that's what they said. Maybe it's an Izeki thing or something, but essentially they're, they were saying in so many words, don't call us if you find the rings lined up. It's not the end of the world. Let's see how well this baby works. I'm probably gonna wish I had one extra hand in the vise. There is a right side up for these. This uh, clamp, keep my shirt out of it. Because there's little, there's little uh, dimples in it and they stick out a little farther to help catch the sleeve or block or whatever for whichever engine you're doing. So that it doesn't want to go down in with everything else. That looks like it's gonna clamp down good. Doesn't take a whole lot. Got my uh, rubber hammer wood on the other end. Let's see, make sure it says front. Front is this way. Crank's pretty much at the bottom, but don't really matter too much. I don't put the bearing on until it's through because the process of tapping it in can shake the bearing out. You don't want the cap on what, for what should be obvious reasons. All right. Make sure I got a good angle on this. That went nice. Now we got to rotate the engine on the stand to uh, get her down there and get the bearings in and get the cap on. Hang on everybody, here we go. these bearings are the same top and bottom but some you do have to watch out for I think I'm gonna push that up a little farther should be able to do it by hand okay the rod ain't centered up in the piston I can see there's room for it to move it just done not wanna Wanna watch and get the tab locked in, make sure the bolt or the oil hole is lined up. Get some uh you know that one stuff on there. This is the assembly lube. We'll send a little bit right down the hole. And then I slid it back to the front again. Oh come on. Roll this around a little more to where it'll be easier to get the bolts. 
Now the bearing tolerances are a little tighter on the rods than the main, so we're going with green plastic gauge on this one, on these. Get a strip of it out here. I'm also going to reuse the uh, old bolts for checking the clearance, and I won't put the new bolts in until the final torque down, and that way they only get one stretching on them. So something to consider. Save those old rod bolts, use them for this. Get in there, then stay in there. Almost sending her home dry. Granted, this is just a, to check tolerances, but we want to get as accurate of a reading as we can. The book says 45 foot pounds, 44 to 46, we'll shoot for 45. Uh, one of the service bulletins, one of the things it addressed was not only not getting tight enough, but too tight too, that some guys figure if some is good, more is better. They're putting a couple of little extra oomps into it and that stresses these bolts too much. They might be not broken at the moment, but uh, the extra stress once they get going might push them over the edge. So 3 8 12 point. Want to avoid turning the crank because that'll smear your plastic gauge. on the first one so we'll just take this one on up maybe I should turn it so hopefully you can see it and maybe you won't I can't turn it now I don't know I need to see it you just gonna have to okay phone ring so I got to turn this back on. We were up somewhere around 20 uh, foot pounds. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 30, 32, 35. Should start beeping any moment now. Well, I guess I'm going to 45, aren't I? Nope, oh, I hit 46. That's within range. Clear that off. Forty-five point one. Yeah. Now let's undo it and see how the plastic gauge turned out. It moved on me a little bit, but we got a good sample there. They want them pretty uh, close. That's why I had to switch to the green, and it goes to one to a thousandth. I think that's the metric side. They say mm, the tightest is a half a thousandth, and what was the max? Two and a half. Well, that is the range they want was a uh, oh, oh, or half to one and a half. Boy, it's just looking at it there. It's not quite as wide as the two. Maybe just a skosh wider than the one. I think that's going to work. Um, let's go over to the book. Yeah, half a thousandth to one and a half, maximum two and a half. Yeah, definitely not one. There's one and a half. Definitely not that. There's two. Well, I got the uh, the mic out. Check the journals. They are right where they're supposed to be. 
for 20 under. Had me a little concerned there. I uh, had my math off. Fortunately, my brother came by and uh, we uh, he pointed out my math error. I uh, double checked the rod, um, rod openings. They're on the money, cranks on the money. And technically that's in spec. Um, like I say, plastic gauge is showing somewhere in that little bit over that is one and a half thousandths, but they do allow up to a max of two and a half thousandths. So I would like it to be closer to the tight end just cause uh, more gap means more oil gets through, which causes lower oil pressure. But uh, I don't know, to try to gain a thousand back, uh, not sure what the heck we could do from there. I guess uh, possibly we try to resize the rods a little bit smaller. But, you know, technically it's in spec. So I guess we're going to go with it. Going to let her ride. And I guess, you know, I'll put a GoPro on the camera so you can watch the rod fly out to side. So I'm going to put my measuring tools away before they fall and get hurt or something. And we'll get back at it. Yesterday was quite the day for the 310. As you've probably already seen some of. Didn't get a whole lot accomplished. And then apparently I messed up a setting on the GoPro. And so I'm not sure how much of that's going to be usable. I'm going to go over what I've done so far. And uh, let's get this closer. I'm pretty sure the uh, part of, you know, uh, ring compressing, all that went fine. Um, got the piston drove in, bearing in, plastic gauged, and it's, uh, oh, it came out, oh, just their, uh, their ideal is half a, half a thousandth to one and a half thousandths. It was coming out just a little bit wider than that one and a half. It wasn't up to two, according to the plastic gauge. And wanting to get this thing as perfect as possible, um, they do have an allowance all the way up to two and a half thousandths. So it's in spec, just not in their uh, ideal spec or really close to that. So, um, so I plastic gauge come out that way. So I think, all right, let me try another set of bearings in there, open another box, swap the bearings out, plastic gauge again, comes out exactly the same. So then I get my, um, oh, the mic out and calipers and stuff and just start really checking things. Uh, check a rod in, because those have been resized. He's got those in spec. Um, check the journals, they're in spec. I think the difference is like uh, he, it was only a half a thousandth tolerance, but he's got these right at the upper end of that tolerance. And I think these are a little bit on the, you now they're midway on the tolerance there. So you, if they were on the tight side, we'd probably get that, um, be down closer to that half a thousandth tolerance gap, which seems kind of tight to me. Did some reading online last night. Um, and I didn't know this. The uh, rule of thumb is for every inch of uh, journal diameter, you want a thousandth of clearance. So these are almost two and a half inch. So technically you'd want two and a half thousandths of clearance, which is what the book says is the maximum allowable. So that kind of goes with that theory. So I'm under, well under that. And I could take the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a little dry this morning. Can't be putting stuff in dry. Um, could take the rods in, have them resized to try to gain just a little bit of clearance that's obviously still within spec. So I've decided I'm going to run with it. It's it's good. It's it's not in their perfect range, but it is super close, and it is still within their tolerances, easily within their tolerances. So that's where I'm at. Um, we'll see how much of video I can salvage from yesterday. Which you've probably already seen that by now. So, 
This one has uh, tested out good. Uh, the only thing I need to do is take these old bolts out and put the new ones in because that's the, uh, I've got all new rod bolts. I'm just using the old ones for uh, checking tolerances and everything like that. That way, once the new ones are in, they only get torqued and stretched once, not repeatedly. I don't know if, you know, someone might have over torqued these in the past. Just an extra insurance for no more than the price of bolts are. Almost pulled that cap off. I just need to change the bolts. Uh, before I set the rods in to be uh, checked out and everything, I did run a tap down them and I made sure it was deep enough because Mayboss send a, a bolt that's slightly longer than the original and sometimes they're not quite tapped enough. Most of these were, there was a couple that was close, but I made sure, um, I've also heard debate on the internet about these uh, washers. And Mayballs don't send them for no reason. There was an issue with them not having enough chamfer in that hole and the shoulder of the bolt hitting. So they're not sending you washers for uh, just to sell you washers the reason for them being in there and I'm going to use them and I'm also going to pull that one back out and put oil on it because they are supposed to be lubed I almost forgot again All right, here we go see how close I can get to 45 without going over 30 38, 39, 30, 40, 44, Oop, 45, 48. That's still in the 44 to 46 range. All right, I think we can see the readout there. Let's see if I can do this while holding. like to double check that one is home that's where it's staying. I guess the time will tell. The advantage of having a tighter tolerance is there's more resistance to the oil flowing through, so you should get more oil pressure. Of course, if it's too tight, things could drag and get hotter. Um, the article I was reading about tolerances, uh, generally the tighter they are, the lower viscosity oil you want to run. Um, in racing world, uh, Looser is faster is their thing. Less drag. These are guys that are rebuilding engines after, you know, just a couple of races, a few races. So we are going to send it. And you'll get to see this tractor run. I guess the proof will be in the pudding. I'm probably just a little on the nervous side. Uh, it's a 310. They're notorious. I've got all you guys watching. Anyways, next hole. Front on the rod, front on the piston, both facing the same way. Basically just double checking my work from earlier. Ooh. There we go. And what did I do with, oh, right there she is. The old rubber mallet. There 
the old rubber mallet. If it's taking a lot of effort, you're probably catching a ring somewhere. You don't want to hit her too hard or you'll break them or scuff them or something. But that ring, new ring compressor is uh, definitely doing good, especially for 11 bucks. So now let's roll her over. That should be pretty good. We'll use this set of bearings. You know, some guys can, some guys can do everything right and it'll still fail and other guys can never even break out the torque wrench, put an engine together and it works great. So go figure. I've got a bolt in the front of the crank so I can uh, basically do this. like I could drive it up just a little more or down if you're the right side up Another one down. Let's roll her back over and might as well just keep working our way towards the front.
One more to go. Everything turns smooth, no resistance, no tough spots or anything. Almost there. Looks good. Starting to take a little effort with all them rings going up and down. But it turns nice and smooth. I don't feel any drawer, you know. It's tight spots or anything, very consistent. The bearings for the rods all ended up being very consistent. Basically one and a half thousandths, give or take, just a skosh. Um, nothing was as wide or as tight as a thousandth and nothing was as open as two thousandth. So I'm gonna call that good. I, I can live with that. Let's roll her over. Watch them pistons go up and down. It's beautiful. Now well, that's gonna wrap things up for part four. Overall went pretty good, I think. A little bit of stressing, probably over nothing. But we will see you. As always, I appreciate everybody watching. We will see you in the next one. Let's look under the cover. Ooh. Put your top back on. No pillow biting for you.